Did you know you could fill up a car like this for about $10? 10 bucks. That's right. And we'll show you how to do it. Now the trick is, you need one of these with one of these. Or one of these with one of these. Now it turns out the cheapest place to fill up is not here or even here, but rather right here in your own garage. And all you really need is one of these and one of these, or better yet, one of these, which is plugged into a high power outlet. How cheap, you ask? Grab a coffee and let's dig right into the math. Utility companies have to run power plants all day long to meet our electricity needs. Now, especially during the day, that's when most electricity gets used, just like we used this coffee maker a minute ago. So during the day, the energy use climbs and then it goes down in the evening and overnight, there's very little energy use. So instead of plugging your car in during the day when most of the electricity is being used, the best thing to do is to plug it in at night. And that way, the energy is already available. This is also when it's the cheapest. So we have something called time of use rates. So the way this works is, right now we're in the winter months, so from midnight to midnight, you can see that during the beginning part of the day, so from midnight till 6 a.m. and from 11 p.m. to midnight, so wrapping around, that's when the electricity is the cheapest. It's the same way in the summer months, but it's even more pronounced because of air conditioning. But let's stick with winter. So the best time to charge your car is from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. Now this particular rate is called nighttime savers, and this is the best one for EV drivers in most cases. What's the best way to find out which rate you're on? Well, pull up your bill. One way is to pull up the Consumer's Energy app. You can look up your bill. And in this case, there's a section here called rate information on page two. Now you can see I'm on the residential nighttime savers or rate code 1050. We find for most cases that this is the one that's most beneficial for EV drivers. Oh, and if you wanna know how to change rates, go to the end of the video or to the description I'll put a link in there on how to contact somebody about changing your rate or to actually get somebody to calculate which rate would be most beneficial for you. Now we're going to do some math. I hope you were paying attention to math class in high school. If nothing else, grab some more coffee. The first thing we got to do is figure out how big is the battery in the car. I'm not an artist. Anyway, there's a battery in here with a plus and a minus and it's got a certain capacity. In the case of the Bolt EV, it is 65 kilowatt hours. So that's, the, that's how much energy is stored inside the battery. So let's say for a moment that you come in at 0%, so the battery is totally dead, and we want to take it up to 100%. Now normally you wouldn't do that, but this is the calculation for a fill-up. Normally we would charge to about 80%. That's just better for, for the longevity of the battery. Now, one more thing we have to take into consideration is that EV charging is not 100% efficient. So it's probably about 90% efficient. So that means we need to put a little bit more energy than the 65 kilowatt hours, and that's actually what you're paying for. So let's say 90% efficiency. So the way this works is the 65 kilowatt hours divided by 0.9 efficiency is about 72 kilowatt hours. So as you can see, we need a little bit more, and this is actually what we're paying for. So now, 72 times the going rate, which was 0.14 dollars per kilowatt hour, equals, now we're gonna use a calculator, 72 times 0.14 equals 10.08, so $10.08. So there's your fill-up cost if you had to charge the car from zero to 100%. Speaking of miles, if we're gonna do a calculation to compare with the gas car, we need to figure out the cost per mile. So on a highway, 
when there's more air resistance you're going to get about 200 miles of range out of that 65 kilowatt hour battery and around town you're going to get about 250. so on average let's say it's about 225 miles so if we use this 1008 so 1008 and divide it by 225 miles we get divided by 225 equals 4.48 cents so it's about is about five cents per mile so remember that number because we're going to need that when we compare to gas so now let's take a look at a similar gas car and I looked it up I picked out the Chevy Trax which is a similar small crossover and I looked it up and it gets somewhere around 27 miles per gallon on average at least that's what Chevy tells us so now let's look at what it would cost per mile so if we use the same 225 miles miles at 27 miles per gallon the gallons will go up in the numerator let's get the calculator 225 divided by 27 will give us about eight and a third gallons equals 8.33 gallons now I noticed today it's December 6th 2022 at the local Sam's Club we're offering gas for 338 per gallon so if we multiply that out times 3.38 we come up with 28.17 And if you remember before, we had $10.08. So now let's calculate the cents per mile. So if we use the 28.17 for the fill up divided by 225 miles, then divided by 225 is 0 0.125, 0.125 this is dollars per mile and that's your mileage cost for gas versus five cents or really 4.5 cents we round it up so we could round this up to 13 cents but that's what makes EVs so compelling from a fuel cost basis do you need to wait until 11 o'clock to plug it in absolutely not you can program that stuff just plug it in when you get home and then the car will do the rest most cars have a way to program the scheduling right on the screen or even right on the app. And if you'd rather do it on the charger, you can do that as well. Normally you can program it right in the app, in this case, starting at 2300 hours or 11 p.m. and ending at 6 a.m. on weekdays and all day on weekends. And if you need to override it, you can just start charging now. You just have to be okay that the rates are going to be a little bit higher, but nonetheless, it will start charging and you can get the range that you need. Last but not least, if you're a consumer's energy customer and you'd like a $500 rebate on a home charger, like a ChargePoint Home or an NLX juice box, go to consumersenergy.com EV and someone will help you out with the rebate process and or getting it installed. That's it for home charging. Next time we'll talk about public charging.